Hello my friends, thank you for being here today. We have a three-in-one review on some Tarte Holiday stuff. Okay, I took these out. You'll see them in a second, but we've got a blush set, a lip set, and an eye set as well. So I've been playing with these over the last few days, and since I'm really definite on what I think about them now, I thought I would share my review. This is such an exciting time of year for me. These holiday kits that come out, there can be some really good values, but there's also some things where it's like, what? That wasn't really worth it. So the reviews are really essential, so I like to be able to step in and do that for you. And please let me know in the comments section if there are any other holiday things that you've got your eye on this year. There are definitely some other things that I'll be reviewing in the near future, and those were mentioned in my haul video, my last video. But let's chat about this blush set first. This is a five-in-one blush kit, and I got it on Ulta's website. That's where all these came from, double-checking the price. It was $39. They say it's a $75 value, so you're getting many sizes of five different cheek products here. There are four blushes and one highlight, and two of the blushes are like regular line known blushes, and then the highlight and the other two blushes are limited edition. But just to cut to the chase here, I think these are all beautiful. It's 100% good quality in this kit. There's no duds. Um, all of the blushes seem to give off a matte finish, and then you have that highlight where it's kind of nice because you can really customize the amount of glow that you get on your skin. And you could give this as one big gift or you could split them up and put them as the best little stocking stuffer ever. A blush. I mean, is there a better stocking stuffer than blush? But the other day I was playing with Exposed and Captivating. I layered the two and Exposed, I was kind of like, oh, that's a little more color than I remember getting out of this. It looks like kind of a dusty rose blush. And um, the original Exposed, I compared it to the one I have. I only own a few full-sized Tarte blushes and Exposed is one of them. And and my original one does not give off near as much color as this. Like the swatches kind of look like two different shades. Now I don't mind that, but I still liked regular Exposed even though it was more subtle on my skin. And this one definitely I think gives off just a little more depth and a little more rosiness. That's fine by me, but it's just not exactly the same as my old Exposed. Now maybe that product is aged and not quite as good, but the texture still feels nice. And I still enjoy wearing it from time to time, but this just seems a little different to me. Now Captivating is the other blush that's already part of Tarte's line, a bestseller as they call it, and I don't have an original to compare this to, but this is a really pretty kind of like peachy pink blush. Um, it What really comes to mind when I use this is actually an old favorite of mine from Milani, and it was when they had their Minerals blush, it was still pressed, but they called it Milani Minerals, and the shade was called Mai Tai, and it was the perfect like fusion of peach and pink, and that's what this is to me. So it really reminds me of that. Again, matte finish with that one. Now today I'm wearing a couple of the others. I put on Delight, which strikes me as the deepest one in this setup here. So it's kind of a bit more plummy berry vibe in that blush. What I love about these is that they're just easy to throw on. Like they definitely have pigment. Each blush holds its own and is different from the next and you can definitely tell, but they're not a struggle to put on. You don't have to be too, too careful with it. But I'm wearing that today for that nice pretty hint of berry glow and then I decided to layer on a bit of Charmed. It's this light little burst of what I would call warm pink. If you compare that to Captivating, Captivating seems just a little richer and deeper to me and this is really like kind of that bright cheek pop. If I just add a little bit more for you here because I didn't go adding extra at the end of my look today. Can you kind of see what I'm talking about here? It's one of the softer shades. And what I also like about this is if I add a little more of one of these matte tart blushes at the end of my look, it does kind of blur the skin and make it look even more flawless. But do you see that little punch of color that it gives, but it's soft. And then we come to our highlight and that is in the shade called Fantasy. So this is your one source of shimmer in this kit and it's really, really pretty. I would call it kind of a soft golden tone, gold mixed with champagne pain maybe, and it's plenty bright enough to really have an impact on the skin. So I've got this on my cheekbones today. I put it a little bit on my forehead. I used it on my Cupid's bow as well. I think it's super radiant. I love the texture. It's not at all um, chunky or super like, you know, exaggerated looking on the skin. It definitely glows, but you're not seeing a weird texture thing going on with it. And it's easy to apply. Definitely beautiful formulas throughout this whole kit. Again, I like the color variety. If we had two shades here doing almost 
the exact same thing. You guys know that would be a bit of a problem for me, but I feel like everything holds its own. Exposed is your dusty rose. Um, then we get a little deeper with the shade called Delight. And then we've got a couple of different sources of pops. That pretty peachy pink with Captivating and then that lightest pop with the shade called Charm. So I love it. I think if you've got a person in your life who you know loves blush or if that person is you, you would really like this kit. Okay, now things take a bit of a turn when we're talking about these 30 Second Eyes Shadow and Liner Duos. So this whole thing was $29. A good deal for Tarte brand products. You're getting three full size things here and they're double ended sticks. So on one end, you're getting a shadow stick and on the other end, you're getting a pencil liner, retractable with all of this. Apparently this one that's called Rose Gold Luster in Brown is a best selling shade and then these other two are new shades in this. But all three of the shadow stick colors are really light and shimmery. As you can see, you've got that rounded tip. It's not huge, but it's not too small. It's definitely a standard size, like if you're familiar with Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks or the Mally Shadow Sticks. Um, that's the one they called Rose Gold Luster, which just kind of strikes me as more of a champagne-y color. The golden pink luster, to me, seems more like classic rose gold. And there's a little bit more of a color punch to that one. And then the golden bronze luster just looks really like classic gold. So those are your three shadow stick colors. Like I said, none are super dark. And really, if I'm thinking of doing a one shadow look on myself, um, I'm not always wanting to just go super light and leave it there. I really like the look of something slightly deeper, something somewhere in the middle of the range. If we've got super dark, super light here, I want my one shadow look to fall kind of in the middle because that gives me sort of an accent on the lid if there's a little metallic quality to it. And then I can blend it up into the crease and actually get a little bit of impact there too. And it can also work nice as smudgy liner underneath. You know, I wouldn't say any of these shades are dark enough to work as smudgy liner. They're more like accent kinds of colors if you want to use them in a different way other than just all over the lid. And then the pairing eyeliners that are on the other ends. We've got a black that comes with the golden pink luster. Let me just go ahead and swatch them real quick. They go on super easy and smooth. No complaints about the ease of application with any of this. So we're getting like a dark matte brown, a black, and sort of a bronzy brown shimmer. So here's my deal, you guys. I've played with these. I've worn these alone like all over the lid. I tried to do the 30 second thing and I honestly think it took me closer to a minute to actually get the color all over the lid and then get across my lash line with the liner. So no big deal. I think if they would have just called it one minute eyes, a lot of people would have been like, oh, that sounds good. But like yesterday, I really documented the wear because I sensed that these weren't wearing well on me. And I used this um, golden pink luster in black and I wore it all over the lid and I kind of, you know, just blended it up into the crease. It was fine. You know, it's not my favorite favorite type of look all over the lid like that, but it was okay. And then I used the liner as well. And everything did go on easily, although it took me a little more than 30 seconds to do both eyes. And very quickly, I would say within a few hours, and I did prime underneath, um, it's collecting into the crease. And then by a few hours after that, it looks like it's almost totally gone, except for the little areas where it has collected into my creases. And I'm just, I can't do that, guys. There are enough good shadow sticks on the market that are not gonna do that to you. Um, even CoverGirl has made some. Elf, Mally, Laura Mercier, The Balm. There are plenty of different ones that you can put on and they really will set and stay. And these will give you a bit of the illusion that they might do that because when you swatch them on your hand and you kind of rub over them, they're not really like coming off. Maybe I'm seeing a little bit of faded intensity all around as I do this, but they're not just straight up smearing, but they just cannot hang on their own on the eyes. And the liner is well started to fade too. And with that, I feel like the liner has a really hard job because if the base color, the, the shadow stick isn't wanting to stay and then you put liner on top of it, it's going to fight to hold on there as well, whether it was a good liner or not. So today, what I did, if you're wondering what happened to my eyes on this day, I did like an overall matte look with my little Too Faced Fruitcake palette because I'm still in the testing phases with this. I just used all the matte neutrals just for a really basic look. And then I thought I would take this one here. This is the Rose Gold Luster in Brown. 
So it just kind of looks like a champagne color. And I thought I'll give myself just a little pop on the center of the lid and also highlight my inner corner with this. And I feel like that's a way I can possibly salvage this product and get more good out of it is as more of an accent thing. So I used it that way and I just used the liner, which I expect not put on top of the shadow stick, but just put on top of regular shadow is gonna probably last me fine. And I'm wearing some lashes today as well on top of those. So the look of the liner isn't really a big factor for this look, but I mean, knowing what I know now about this stuff, I wouldn't have gotten these. I'm glad I got them to give you a review and to let you know about them. But just in terms of using them in my everyday life, I was not impressed at all with how these wore, and I'm not an incredibly oily person. I don't have super oily lids, but just seeing them collect in the creases slowly and then ultimately look like I had nothing on my lids at the end of the day, I'm not a fan, okay? Like I said, continue to make them work by maybe using them as some accents, maybe, uh, as a lid pop or a little bit of an inner corner pop. Liners could possibly still be good paired on top of powder shadows. Ease of application is great, but if it's not really gonna last me all day, that 30 second claim, you know, it, it doesn't matter to me. It's like, okay, so I did it really, really quick, but it got me through like an hour with flawless looking wear, not worth it. But we're gonna bring things back up here at the end because I do really like this lip set that I tried. This is the Bow and Go Maracuja Juicy Lip Duos. So they call them duos here because they are two totally separate little packages and so it would make a really cute little gift or addition to a gift or a stocking stuffer for someone. You've got the two from on the back as well. These I think have become really popular items in Tarte's line, these Maracuja Juicy Lips. Overall you're getting four. The limited edition shades are Wildberry and Petal and they're paired with best-selling shades Orchid and Coconut. So we're going to go through what all of these look like but overall the format of these products is one of those click up kind of glossy balms is the way I'd call it. There is a ton of shine with these. I'm wearing one on my lips now, but you're going to click a button. A little bit is going to come up and you might be like, uh oh, I can't like click it, twist it back down, you know, is a typical product like that. But you just click it up a little and pretty much all of that layer that you clicked up is going to transfer down onto your lips with sort of a thickness that's really going to give you shine that looks completely like lip gloss, although it feels balmy and moisturizing and really like kind of lip treatment vibes. Overall, three out of these four show up really well as far as their color on the lips. I was really impressed because I wasn't that familiar with coconut. When I first tested things out, I had only used this and I was like, okay, I expect that's gonna be the one that shows up best and I liked it. But coconut and orchid really surprised me with how well they show up and petals kind of soft, but it doesn't necessarily hurt to have a shade like that in here, especially with how treatment-ish these feel, that might be even a nice nighttime one. In the first set, you've got that orchid color, which I think is actually really, really pretty. Just looking at that color in the tube, I was thinking I could see this just being completely sheer, but it actually is kind of a deep, dusty rose type color that I think anybody could enjoy. Um, it could work with any look. Just a super pretty kind of neutral hint of rose type of shade. And then this other one, Wild Berry, that's a new color in this whole collection, and that one's really pretty, a little bit deeper. I would say it's the deepest shade of the whole bunch. That being said, it's still not dark, 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 but it's definitely the most rosy berry looking one of everything. Now we flip over to the next set and we've got Coconut and Petal. And I, again, going in thought both of these were gonna be super duper soft, but Coconut gave me so much more than I expected. That's the one I've been wearing throughout the video and it's kind of like a toasty warm nude. And I thought that was so pretty and it will pair so well with so many of your fall eyes looks. Um, again, these feel great. I don't think my lips have ever felt better after a lip dry on than after I did all these. It's like zero dryness. Everything feels good. But I think that coconut shade is so, so pretty and it might be one of my actual favorites in all of this. And the last one, Petal, this is going to be like something that actually sort of perfects the look of your lips a little bit more because you do have that gloss-like shine. So the surface of your lips looks really smooth and maybe it adds a tint of color, but overall I felt like I was seeing 
getting mostly through to my natural lips with this one. So if you're wanting to reserve one of these as a bit of a nighttime balm type thing, that would be the one. Its color is hardly there. Honestly, a person who rarely wears lip color, but you'd like to gift them something like this that you think feels super comfortable, maybe this might be a nice duo for them because you have that little bit stepped up, slightly deep in nude, and then something that just really lets your natural lip color show through almost entirely. So for all those products being full size, I think the deal is great. Again, these are super comfortable products, not annoying at all, but there's a thickness that comes onto your lips when you apply them in that manner. And then you could go take a lip liner, touch them up a little bit, or maybe even apply lip liner first for better staying power because these are not gonna be a big staying power thing, but that doesn't annoy me near as much as if my eye product is collecting in my crease, you know? There's sort of that expectation that if you put something glossy and balmy on your lips, you're gonna need to be reapplying in a short while. But overall, really like these, um, really like the blush set. Those would be big recommendations from me and was not impressed by the quick stick 30 second eyes duos. I just think there's much better shadow sticks on the market. So guys, I hope this helped you out. If you were considering any of these products, let me know how they work for you if you've tried them. And as always, leave your requests in the comments section. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.